good morning everyone. It's absolutely fantastic that you've uh, decided and taken time to tune in to our service online this morning. As always, every Sunday in Cahorn we come to worship Almighty God. And so we hear these words from Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. And so we thank God for his word and as we come to it this morning in worship, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this time set aside each week to come to you and worship together. And we pray now, Lord, that our worship would be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I'm going to sing a hymn now, a favourite here in Kilhorn. Here I am, Lord. Please do sing along.
service wherein we want to confess our sins to Almighty God. The Word of God tells us that we are by nature a fallen people. We are a people who are in a sinful state. And so we want to come and confess our sins to Almighty God. And so we say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. In God's word, the Bible assures us of his forgiveness. And he says in John, 1 John, he is faithful to forgive those who confess their sins. And so we thank him for that this morning. Wendy's going to come now shortly and uh, bring our Bible readings to us. But before we do that, let us pray as we come to hear God's word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, help us now, Lord, to hear your word with attention and understanding. Write its message on our hearts, so that its power may be seen in our lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first Bible reading is from Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bela and the sons of Zerpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell, sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. And our second Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside to, by himself to pray. Later that night he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. 
Shortly before dawn, Jesus went to them, walking on the lake. When the, the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Well, I hope our boys and girls are watching this morning because this is the partner service, which is especially for you. So we've got Olivia um, and she's got a children's talk for you. And then we're going to have our song, Go Tell the News. Good morning, boys and girls. I've got a couple of things that I want to show you this morning. I've got a pair of boots. I have got a rucksack and I've got a water bottle. I wonder, can you guess what somebody might be doing when they've got these. Can you guess? Hopefully you said maybe going for a walk. And if you said going for a walk up in the mountains, you would be right. Have you ever been walking in the mountains? Maybe you have been walking up Binion or Sleeve Donard, or maybe you've been to my favorite place, the Silent Valley, and walked up into the mountains from there. If you were listening really carefully to our Bible reading from the book of Matthew chapter 14 this morning, you will have heard that Jesus walked up into the mountain. Now, the reason why he did that, he'd been so busy. If you remember even from last week, Jesus had fed the 5,000 people. He had taught them. He had spent all day with them and he needed to be alone. He had sent the disciples away. He told them to go and get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake. He sent the people away. But Jesus went up into the mountains, not in order to see the beauty of the world around him, because it was probably getting quite late and dark. He wasn't going for exercise, but he was going to do something very special. The Bible tells us that he was going to pray. And this morning, I want you and I to think for a few minutes about what it means to pray. Because prayer is talking to God. And it's so important for you and me to learn how to pray. And so we're going to use the letters of the word pray to help us to remember four things about prayer. The first one is that God wants you to repent. Now, what does that mean? To repent means to turn away, to change direction. The Bible says that you and I have been born with that big problem. Do you know what it is? Yes, it's sin. And sin is something that keeps you and I away from God. And so it takes us in the wrong direction, if you like. We have got our back on God and we're going away from God. And the first prayer that God wants you to pray is that prayer to say sorry to him. Because that is what it means to repent, to be so sorry for all those wrong things that you've done, that you don't want to do them anymore, that you want to turn away from them and you want to go God's way. And so that's the first prayer that God wants you to pray, to say sorry to him. I wonder, have you done that? Have you asked him to forgive you? Have you turned away from your sin? You can, even now where you're sitting, there at home, you can tell God that you're sorry for the wrong things that you've done. You can pray to him. Now the second letter, we can praise God, can't we? Because when you know God, when you have asked him to forgive your sin, then God wants you to praise him. Now, very often we think about praising when we're singing. And of course, that's a wonderful way of praising God. And that's something I really miss, not being able to be together at church. But we can also praise God as we talk to him. There's some lovely psalms that you can read and that you can read out loud to God that will help you to praise him. Listen to Psalm 8, verse 1. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth, or how great is your name in all the earth. 
we are praising God, we're telling him how great he is. And that's so important for you and I. If you know the Lord Jesus as your saviour, if you have turned away from your sin, how important it is to praise God for who he is and for all that he has done. So that's the second way that we can learn how to pray. But we can also ask God. We can come to God and we can tell him the things that we need. Now, it's not like coming to God with a shopping list. God doesn't give us everything that we want, but God will give you the things that you need every day. And so you can ask him. You can ask him to help you to live for him. You can ask him to help you to understand the Bible as you read it. And he will hear those prayers and he will answer those prayers. God hears and answers every prayer that you bring to him. But he doesn't always answer it the way you might expect. Let's think about it like this. Imagine you ask your mummy one day for some sweets and you've had your lunch. It's a little while till dinner time. And so she says, yes, you can have some sweets. Maybe another day you ask her for sweets, but mum looks at her watch. The dinner's almost ready. Let's wait. If you eat your dinner, you can have some sweets after dinner. So let's just wait today. And so you wait to get what you want. And maybe another day she, you ask her for some sweets and she thinks about all the things that you've eaten that day and she knows, no, you don't need any sweets today. And so she says, no. Each time, mommy has answered you, hasn't she? She has heard what you've asked and she has answered. It's been a different answer and maybe not always the answer that you want, but it's the answer that is right for that time. And it's just like that with God. God hears all our prayers and he will answer you. And so you can pray, pray for people who are sick, pray for people that you know in church, pray for our church as we need a minister. There are so many prayers that you can pray, things that you can ask God for. And as you pray, God will hear and God will answer. And you don't have to be in church to pray. You can be anywhere. There's a little course we sing sometimes. You can be on the top of a mountain or you can be down in the valley. You can be out playing. You can be sitting beside your bed. You can talk to God anywhere at any time. And of course, the last word that we want to think about is to say thank you. To thank God for all that he has done. So when you pray, it's so important to say thank you when God answers your prayer. Whenever you've asked God for something and he gives it to you, say thank you. Think about all the things that God has given, you can say thank you to God. And so Jesus went up into the mountain to pray. He needed to pray, even though he is the son of God. And you and I need to pray. And if you are a Christian boy or girl, pray every day. Talk to God and remember those four points. It's important to repent. It's important to praise God. We can ask God for things and then we can say thank you. And I hope that you remember the importance of learning how to pray.
Thank you, Olivia. Hope you enjoyed that, boys and girls. Well, we come now uh, to the point in our service where we declare what it is we believe. And it is our custom to do that every week in Kilhorn when we meet. We, we usually stand and we say together a creed. This morning we're going to say together an ancient creed. It is the Apostles' Creed and it is one of the oldest creeds that belongs to the church. And so we're going to say that together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And so we continue in prayer. Let us pray. The prayer, special prayer for today, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of his grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in an attitude of prayer and we want to bring our prayers and requests and intercessions and petitions and make them known unto Almighty God. This morning we want to start by giving thanks and praise to our Heavenly Father. Lord God, you are sovereign. You are in control and you are over all. You are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. This morning we give you thanks for your word. We thank you that it is upheld here in our church. It is taught and expounded and explained faithfully week by week. We pray, Father, that that would continue here in this place in the months and the years ahead. Heavenly Father, we pray that it would be a guide to us. It would be a lamp onto our feet in all matters of life. It would be our rule and our final authority. Heavenly Father, we want to praise you and give you thanks for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by becoming a servant and coming to this earth, emptied himself and Father, taking the form of a servant, went to the cross, was killed on the cross, making their full satisfaction for your wrath. And Father, rising again three days later and ascended to your right hand where he makes intercession on our behalf. Lord God, we give you thanks for the glorious gospel for it is the power unto salvation. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to pray for the world at this time. We live in a world that is fallen, broken, sinful, a world that is full of pain and fear. Especially at this time with the coronavirus pandemic, many are afraid, many elderly people Many young people too, Father, are afraid to go out and to live the life that they maybe once lived a couple of months ago. Father, you are the great comforter. You are sovereign. You are over all. And we simply put our trust in you as your children, following you and your leading. Father, we submit to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to pray for our nation here in the United Kingdom. 
We pray for those in authority, our Queen. We pray for our Prime Minister, his Cabinet and the Government. We especially want to pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson as he makes regulations around the coronavirus and on a daily basis reviews that and things are changing quickly. Lord God, would you grant to him and his cabinet wisdom at this time? You have put the government into a position of authority. Father, we pray that we would honour them. But more importantly, Father, we pray that we would honour you for you are our true King. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to pray for the church, the bride of Christ, here on earth, especially worldwide. And we want to, this morning, remember those who face persecution, our brothers and sisters. We pray that you would sustain them by your grace and enable them to be a good witness to their persecutors, even Lord, we pray. We think of our local church here in Annalon, for Kilhorn, we think of the vacancy which we're currently in. We pray, Lord God, that you would bring in your own timing a man who will proclaim the scriptures faithfully week by week, will uphold them, will, Father, Father tend to your flock here in Annalon. We trust in your timing and we pray for the nominators as they seek that rector for our parish in jesus name amen we think of the mission of this church those who are connected with it we think of david and olivia with cf we think of chris and lotta with uh, crosslinks and we think of jane white on the mercy ship we thank you for them and we pray that you would bless their efforts for the gospel may they see children, adults, pastors, uh, taught uh, how, faithfully the gospel. And Father, would you enrich their ministry wherever you have placed them in Jesus' name. Amen. We think of those, especially Father, who have been bereaved in recent days and we want to pray for the Blakely family. Lord God, you are the great comforter. You are the God who grants peace that surpasses all understanding. And we pray that you would impart that peace to that family at this time as they mourn their loss in their family circle. We think of those in residential care who may be lonely at this time of isolation. May you come and surround them with your love. And may they find comfort in your words in the Bible. Father, for any and any kind of need, would we as the church surround them and help them? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we want to conclude our prayers with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hand over now to Mrs Shirley Crutchley. Good morning everyone. It is good to be able to join in worship today, even though in the current circumstances we are physically distanced. God's word reminds us in John chapter 4 and verse 14 that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I do pray that all is well with you and your loved ones. To any who are ill at this time, 
I pray that you may experience God's healing touch, his presence and his peace. To all who are bereaved, I pray that you may know God's comfort and strength and draw solace from his word, which reminds us the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. As we come now to look at God's word, we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we will hear your voice speaking into our hearts today and that we will respond to you in loving obedience. Amen. We live in troubling and difficult times. Many in our world today are facing problems. Many are beset by all kinds of trouble. Many are filled with fear and worry. From the dawn of time, it would seem that living life day by day, in whatever age, has brought its own set of problems. The Bible readings for today give us examples of some of the difficulties and the outcomes. The Old Testament reading from Genesis points us to one character, Joseph. He was in trouble. True, he was greatly favoured by his father Jacob, and partly because of this, he was hated by his brothers. In the full account of his life, he suffered cruelty. He was sold as a slave, falsely accused and imprisoned. But his worth was finally recognised and he was elevated to the position of Prime Minister of Egypt. And he was mightily used by God to bring honour to God's name. Among his final words to his brothers, he exclaimed, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish the saving of many lives. In all of his life, Joseph honoured God. He could testify that good can come from evil. No trial is pleasant at the time. However, troubles can be turned into opportunities. Perhaps through your trouble or your trial today, God is using that situation to bring glory and honour to his wonderful name. So I encourage you, keep trusting for greater things. In the New Testament reading, from Matthew's account of the Gospel, we find the disciples in a worried state, caught in a storm on the lake and crying out for help. That is our natural reaction too, isn't it, when in trouble? We cry out to God in prayer and he is there for us as he was for his disciples. Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. The disciples had been following Jesus as he journeyed from place to place during his earthly ministry. We see from this account and from many others that prior to the undertaking of any form of ministry, preaching or practical, Jesus spent long times in prayer. For example, even before Jesus began his earthly ministry, he spent 40 days fasting and praying in the wilderness. In chapter 14, the news had just reached Jesus of the beheading of John the Baptist. What was his reaction? He spent time alone in prayer. We are told he went to a solitary place. Following this story, the chapter goes on to give us the account of the feeding of the 5,000. 
And then today's reading follows. In verse 22, we read, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side of Lake Galilee, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, what did he do? He went up into a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. You see, Jesus prioritised the practice of prayer and set his disciples and us a fine example to practice and to follow. Since mid-March, for many of us, our pattern of living and way of life has changed quite dramatically. We have had to readjust our schedules, slow down a bit, even take time to enjoy the beauty of the world around us. Some have found the changing pattern refreshing. Others have found it difficult. They have suffered from loneliness and isolation and are longing for times of fellowship to emerge again. Some have shown great kindness in helping others. Some have greatly benefited from kindly neighbours and family members. Many have found more time to reflect on the true meaning of life. They have found more time to pray and to read God's word. Jesus in his ministry always had time for people. His example of prayer, compassion and love for others is our inspiration daily to follow gladly in his footsteps. Joseph Scriven, who wrote What a Friend We Have in Jesus, wrote out of the sorrows that he experienced in his own life. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The prayer of faith. There's also in life the element of fear. In verse 25 of Matthew 14, we read, During the fourth watch of the night, that is three o'clock in the morning, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter said, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Peter had asked Jesus if he could come to him on the water. And Jesus replied, come. Peter responded by leaving the boat, but he lost his nerve in the storm. He took fear. He took his eyes off Jesus and looked around and down at the stormy sea. But we learn that in the hour of Peter's need and the disciples' need, Jesus came to them. He was there for them. 
some in our world today have taken their eyes off Jesus, who is the author and finisher of their faith. They have looked at the storm raging around them. They have allowed fear to take the place of faith. Now is the time to cry out, like Peter, Lord, save me. Just as Jesus' compassion and love surrounded his friends in their time of need, so today he meets the need of all who cry out to him. When the wind is contrary and life is a struggle, Jesus is there to help and to save. Christians should have that courage and that faith. One of our spiritual songs has these very encouraging words. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And a chorus which we used to sing, Christ is the answer to my every need. Christ is the answer. He is my friend indeed. Problems of life my spirit may assail. With Christ as my saviour, I need never fail. For Christ is the answer to my every need. Do you believe that? In conclusion, here are some things to consider. First of all, how important is it to find time to pray each day? How do we face each day that the Lord gives us? Do we remember to speak to him Maybe more importantly, do we listen to him? How is your faith and my faith? Secondly, how do we face the storms of life? To whom do we turn in our time of need? Is Jesus the one that we can turn to when life circumstances are proving to be difficult and to be challenging. Thirdly, have we recognised Jesus for who he really is? Verse 33 in chapter 14 is a very interesting verse. Having come through the storm, the disciples came to this conclusion. Then those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. You see, Matthew tells us of a debate that was going on among the various groups of people. The religious leaders didn't recognize Jesus as the Son of God. They viewed him as a threat to their authority. The people in Jesus' hometown didn't recognize him as the Son of God. They said, sure we know him. We know Joseph. We know his mother Mary. We know his brothers and sisters. Jesus was not able to do many mighty works because of their lack of faith. What about you and me? What does Jesus mean to you? Do you worship and say, truly, you are the Son of God? When we fully understand the significance of this, we will be inspired to follow Jesus day by day, to keep close to him in prayer, to trust him day by day, 
and faithfully to serve him, both in word and in deed. Helen Lamel wrote these words. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Saviour and life more abundant and free. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over sin, over us, sin no more has dominion. For more than conquerors are we. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Faith versus fear. Will you choose faith? Jesus says, take courage, it is I, and don't be afraid. Amen. Well, we want to say a big thank you again for listening to our service and we pray that you have been greatly blessed by it. By way of announcements, uh, much the same as previous weeks, we are back again next week at 11 a.m. online and we pray that you will uh, come and listen once again. We read these words in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Your hand, O God, has guided. Amen.